Hello everybody, my name is Alan from Cyberlab and today we'll start to explain some options of cloud that you can use. In the first time I start to use the AWS, but the AWS only offer a 12 month period that you can use this cloud system. And it's really good principally for some application that you want to do outside your home and you don't want to have a computer full time running. This kind of application can be a WordPress server, you can do a Plex server, you can do an AMB server and other applications. I was looking for some option of a VPS that you can use only dedicated for these ones, but most of them the price is quite high compared for the service that you use. Until one of the subscribe offered me, Alan, why you don't look for Oracle Cloud's free tier? In this free tier, they offer some computer power and some other application that you can use and maybe will fit for your application. So I look on it and I find a lot of information. This one I start to look, it's interesting, how you can start your free cloud and how it's work. In this way, the next videos I will show what application that you can run in your cloud system. In this way, you don't need to have a physical VPS paying one VPS and you can have a lot of application outside in your house. So if you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're gonna show in this video, but first of all, don't forget to leave your like subscribe to the channel and let's do it. So I was looking at the, the blog that this subscribe sent me and uh, I'd be surprised that from September 2019, uh, Oracle started to offer a free, always free service. And that I start to look a little bit more about them. They start to include one of the Ampari a1 computer power. What means that Ampere? It's basically a CPU that work with ARM. And uh, this CPU work with ARM, it's really similar for a Raspberry Pi. So you're gonna have a similar CPU than a Raspberry Pi, of course, more powerful and with more run memory that work outside your house. Have some limitation, possibly for storage. They don't have a lot of storage, but some application that you can do don't need large amount of storage, so should be fine for you. And then look more for uh, Oracle website and they say that uh, Oracle free tier, this one that we're gonna do the installation and do all the applications. And they say new always free service. And that's what did they include in this one? They include two Oracle's database, two ADM computer virtual machines, VS, VMS, and four instance of ARM Ampere computer power. That it's great. And that's if we go down here, what they say, they say that you have a period of trial for 30 days and after this one you can continue as a always free serve with not interrupt. It means that once that you create, according then, if I understand right, you're not gonna pay anything else and you're gonna have this system forever. It means that you can have two ADM computers and each one with one gigabyte. Also, you can have up to four instance and 24 gigabytes. You can split it to four virtual machines, only one with uh, four cores. And that is quite good and quite powerful. Four cores will be similar for a Raspberry Pi, but these cores will be a little bit more powerful. So we're gonna show you to it in a second. Also, you can have a two volume storage with up to 200 gigabytes. You have a 100 gigabyte object storage, 10 gigabyte of archive. So if you have this one, uh, we need to do our account. You can come here, sing in, they will go for all the process and will not show how to do it. What you're gonna do, it's already come in our account. I just created this account for five days, so I really don't know what's gonna happen and what's gonna change after these five days, but uh, I will discover and I will keep you updated. But for now, what we can do? We can create our virtual machine, what we are looking to do this now. I want to create this virtual machine because it will be necessary to have this virtual machine for the next video. So I come here and put create instance and they appear my instance here. I can set up the name of the instance. Let's put as a VM, Sauber Lab. It means that it will be a virtual machine. If I leave everything as default, they will select as a, a ADM computer. So if I come here and edit, and I can ha have a see, manage the shape, so I can define as a Amper VM, and here I can define up to four courses, the limits that I have, what they say that is free. 
Uh, each processor will be 2.8 and you can have up to 8 processors, but we not worry about it. If you come here for 16, they will be increased. If I come here my 6 virtual machines, I will have 24 GB of RAM and also I have a bandwidth with uh, 4 GB, but I'm not, I will not do it now. I will come here and I will look for this option that will be a basic one virtual machine because I already have one computer crate, so I will have only the other 50% available for me. Now I have this one always free, 0.48 gigabytes of uh, bandwidth. It means that we will have uh, download upload mass 480 megabytes. For me it's fine and for the application that I will use is totally fine. So I can come here and select the shape, the red appear this one. And if I come here a little bit lower, I can define my network. If I have more than one virtual machine, imagine that I make four virtual machines in an ARM system and plus two virtual machines in an ADM system. It means that we will have a total of six virtual machines. I can define that all these virtual machines will be in the same network and that I will leave exactly the same network or I can define that will be in different networks. If it's in being different networks, so they will uh, they will not communicate between themselves and will be different IP address for each network. But in this one, I don't want to do this way. So now I will leave everything in the same network. What now I need to do for I access my SSH, I can define as a no IP that is totally not safe to do it, but I can create my par key. To create my pair key, I leave this create pair key and I will put save, save a key and I save my computer. As well, only because I like, I like to download my public key. So I will come here and write to download my public key. Have my both keys downloaded, I can define what kind of configuration that I want to do for my boot volume. I can use a transcode encrypted and I will put create. They will create my virtual machine, they will be provisioned for some time until they will install the OS, create my boot system and do anything. Now that they create everything, they will still provision until this finish, but here will appear my IP address. With this IP address that we can connect through the SSH to do it. But before this happens, we need to convert our key to be able to access to the boot. To do it, we're gonna open the full application. With the put key generator open, I will be able to click here load and I go in the folder that I did my download. I come here and put all the files. I will come here and select my private key. How I know that is this one is private key because I don't have format. So I can come here and select. They will say that it has been accept and that uh, they will do a put format. So I will put OK and I put save public key. They will ask you to define the name. I don't want to put any password. If you want to add a password, you can add here, but I don't want to put save, yes, and I will save the name. It will be uh, PM Sauber Lab, and I put save. Now I can come here and close this page. Once that I appear running, so I can start to access my VM. To access my VM will be through the put, you can do through the SSH, but I want to use the put because it's easy for me. So I will open the put now. As I told, this will be my IP address for the machine, so I will copy it and come here and paste. Now I will come here for the SSH, Arthur, Browse, and then I select my public key that I had configured before and I will put Open. Once that open, the first time they will show this page, so I can come here and put Yes. The user that they're going to use to access it will be OPC, so I can OPC and put Enter. They will make the login, so the first time they're running as an OPC user and have limited admin power. So for use it as admin, we're gonna sudo su and that's we are running as admin. Now what's next step? We're gonna update our system. In order to update our system, we're gonna run a, a little bit different from a Linux, normal Linux. We're gonna do sudo yum update. Of course, in this case, we install the normal Oracle system. If you don't like to use the Oracle system, you always can use a different one. But in this case, we use the standard one and we put here update. So now they will start to run the update option until you have an option to say that they will need to choose some space of your memory. So we're gonna see it. Once that they're running the update, I will go back here and I will go down and put metrics. 
key match they will appear look like a task manager for your virtual machine so in this way you can see how much cpu that they're using how much memory that they're using how much of the disk it's using how much of your network that's using and all the information that's interesting for you if your system is running the limit of the system or is still a gap for more utilization in this video i will stop for now and that's in the next videos i will show how you can install the docker and how you can install all this application on top of it if you didn't want to run the image for oracle linux you could run as a Ubuntu, and as a Ubuntu, you don't need to run a YUM. You can run as a normal system. So, guys, I hope that you like this video. In this video, I only show the basic how you set up your virtual machine in an Oracle website. In the next videos, I will show how you can start to install all these applications on the top of it. If you like this video and think that was useful, don't forget to leave your like, consider to subscribe for the channel, and see you next time. Bye.